Hello students, myself Saurav Yashashwi and today we are going to pick up a new topic that is the steroid hormone that how this uh, steroid hormone is synthesized in the body what are the organs that synthesize steroid hormone and what are the pathways through which they are, through which they are synthesized so basically talking about the steroid hormones we should know what is their parental structure so when we look into the parental structure we come to know that these steroid hormones are basically uh, the cyclopentanoper hydrofenanthrin ring. So the parent structure is the cyclopentanoper hydrofenanthrin ring. And these steroid hormones are synthesized by adrenal cortex, ovaries, testes, and as well as placenta. So basically, we divide these steroid hormones into five classes or five categories that is progestin, melanocorticoids, glucocorticoids which are 21 carbon then we divide then we have androgens it is 19c or 19 carbon compound and the estrogen which is 18c that is 18 carbon compound so basically uh, these steroids as we know now is the uh, derived is the, has a basic parental structure from derived from cyclopentanopar hydrofenanthrin ring and uh, they have been classified uh, which is basically if it classified according to the carbon atoms present in the steroids they have progestins, renocorticoids and glucocorticoids form into 21 carbon compound containing steroids then we have androgens which has 19 carbon and estrogen which has 18 carbons so now we should look into this uh, thing that uh, if we have the parental structure then how these steroid hormones are being synthesized but before that we should know what is uh, main compound from where uh, this uh, steroid hormones are synthesized. So cholesterol. Cholesterol is the primary source uh, of the synthesis. Is the only source, not the primary. So only source from where the steroids are derived. And this is done by a series of enzymatic modifications. So cholesterol is a 27 carbon compound, and uh, it is enzymatically cleaved or modified to form different steroids we have talked about in the last slide and when we see the enzymatic reactions which takes place during the modification of post cholesterol these modifications may be hydroxylation dehydrogenation or hydrogenation or cleavage of carbon carbon bond so this modifications generally takes place in uh, steroidogenic cells where uh, cholesterol gets converted to pregnenolone and is the first reaction in the steroid so let us have a look how this pathway works out and how cholesterol gets into our body to what process cholesterol into into the body so basically when we look into the uh, synthesis of cholesterol we the triglycerides tg here stands for triglycerides that is get, uh, taken up in our diet and these triglycerides uh, goes to the adipocytes uh, in, by the process of digestion we have cholemicrons and this cholemicrons transfers this triglycerides to the adipocytes. So during this process of formation of cholemicrons, what happens is that there are some remnants or there are some residual triglycerides uh, or cholesterol esters, phospho uh, free phospholipids as well as free cholesterol that goes to the liver. But uh, the problem with the liver is that it cannot uh, safely store significant amount of triglycerides and uh, thus it assembles these triglycerides into VLDL which is called as very low density lipoprotein particles and this VLDL or the uh, very low density lipoprotein uh, generally generates cholesterol rich LDL that is low density lipoprotein so this is the process by which body uh, and cholesterol uh, body have the cholesterol that is primarily it is taken primarily we take the uh, fat rich diet if we have a fat uh, as a component in our diet that is digested and it is taken up by the polymicrons and then it is sent to the adipocytes but when it is present in excess it goes to the liver as cholesterol is just we cholesterol or phospholipids but since uh, liver cannot store more than a certain amount of triglycerides this uh, triglycerides is then assembled as very low density lipoprotein and this very low density lipoprotein then metabolizes and then generates uh, the cholesterol rich lipodensity, the low density lipoprotein. 
so now what is this uh, low density uh, lipoprotein or in short we will be calling it as LDL cholesterol rich LDL uh, what it does and how uh, the synthesis of uh, the steroids starts initiates so let us have look on the pathway so when we look into the pathway we see that you here you can see that we have uh, um, LDL that consists of cholesterol and this uh, LDL has FOP100 FOP100 is very important for the LDL particles because it is the only signal through which the LDL receptors the low density lipoprotein receptors present on the plasma membrane or the steroidogenic cells recognizes the low density lipoprotein so FOP100 is very essential and it should uh, the LDL should have FOP B100 lipoprotein, uh, sorry, signal. So once this FOP100 is, uh, uh, once this LDL gets attached to the L, uh, LDL R receptors, it gets internalized, and when it gets internalized, it then fuses with the lysosome, lysosome, and then forms the endosomes. So as soon as the endosomes are formed, the LDL gets released, and the receptors and then. Uh, gets away from the end, uh, endosome and then the, it, the receptors then again through receptor signaling pathway goes towards the plasma membrane so receptor is being recycled so the LDL that contains the cholesterol now due to the presence of lysosomal enzyme uh, it, it generates free, free cholesterol and this free cholesterol uh, has two fates the first is that if the cholesterol is already present uh, the cell and the cell doesn't require the cholesterol then these cholesterols gets modified to the cholesterol esters by the enzyme SI-CoA cholesterol acetyl transferase and when the, whenever this cholesterol is required in the cell then this cholesterol esters then get back to form the free cholesterol by the enzyme cholesterol ester hydrolase so the conversion of free cholesterol to cholesterol esters and cholesterol esters to free cholesterol is a reversible process through which the steroidogenic cells has a good uh, quantity of cholesterol present inside them. So this free cholesterol uh, which is present in the steroidogenic cells is taken up by the STAR that is called as steroidogenic acute dysregulatory protein. So this STAR is crucially uh, uh, important and it is very important for bringing the free cholesterol from outer side of the mitochondrial membrane to the inner side of the mitochondrial membrane that is IMM. So here you can see that this is the mitochondria indicated in the uh, uh, in green color in the diagram and here you can see that the STAR that is the steroidogenic acute regulatory protein is located here in the outer uh, mitochondria it is located at the outer mitochondrial wall uh, you can say it is present within the outer uh, mitochondrial wall or in the inner mitochondrial wall and this STR allows the free cholesterol to pass from the outer side of mitochondria to the inner side of the mitochondria and once this free cholesterol indicated in yellow color dots enters into the mitochondria it is then acted upon by P450 side chain cleavage enzyme that is P450 SCC and where it is converted to the pregnenolone. In the last slide I told you that the first process of estrogenesis is the conversion of cholesterol in presence of P450 side chain cleavage enzyme to pregnenolone the first step of the estrogenesis. So this is how the LDL containing the cholesterol uh, gets internalized into the uh, steroidogenic cells and where then it gets fused with the lysosomes the recycling is one process the other process is the formation of free cholesterol and this free cholesterol whenever it is required is taken up by the STAR uh, protein and that, understand that which helps in transfer of the cholesterol from outer mitochondrial wall to the inner mitochondria wall and inside the mitochondria this P450 cyclic enzyme converts this cholesterol to the pregnenolone. Now in next slide we will see that how this pregnenolone gets modified and there are two pathways through which the steroidogenesis process takes place. So moving to the next slide, 
here we have the whole biosynthesis histrogenic histrogenic pathway you can see here the complete histrogenic pathway that is present here so what you are looking here is that how this pregnant neuron which is uh, has been generated now get will get converted into the respective steroid steroids and uh, at uh, what in which tissue it gets modified the cholesterol gets modified different steroid steroids so here you can see the line diagrams there are several line diagrams and there are tissues so when i talked about the tissues we i have talked about that in cortex i have talked about testes i have talked about ovary and these are the main organs where the steroid formation takes place so when we look at the we should take up first with the adrenal cortex it has three layers so that is zona glomerulosa zona vasculata and zona reticularis so here in this diagram you can see that these regions has been shown uh, the steroidic pathway in these regions has been shown by different colors so let us first take one by one the first layer is one is the zona glomerulosa the final steroid product or by the zona glomerulosa is the aldosterone so the pathway what uh, pathway takes place in the zona glomerulosa is has been indi indicated by the pink color margin so here you can see that the cholesterol is converted into progesterone and pregnenolone is converted to progesterone and from progesterone it is converted to 11d oxycorticosterone and then finally to corticosterone and here from other another pathway is the 11d oxycorticosterone it is converted to 18 hydroxy 11d oxycorticosterone to finally to 18 hydroxy corticosterone and then final product by zona glomerulosa as a steroid comes as aldosterone so this is the pathway uh, for the zona glomerulosa where it synthesizes uh, the steroid aldosterone so in a similar fashion when we look into zona fasciculata here it is indicated in this diagram by the green colored margins so where what it happens that the cholesterol is converted to pregnenolone and pregnenolone then is converted to progesterone and then from progesterone here onwards it gets uh, modified to 17 hydroxy progesterone and then to 11 deoxycortisol and finally the cortisol so the steroid product formed by zona fasciculata of adrenal cortex is the body so and when you look into zona reticularis we have uh, the pregnenolone and it form, find it goes to a different uh, pathway and this pregnenolone here is converted to the 11 hydroxy pregnenolone and then is converted to DHEA it is dihydro aldosterone and uh, then finally to androestenidio so the final product which is formed by the zona reticularis is the androestenida and this the androestenida then, then finally gets modified to form the testosterone but here a critical enzyme called CYP17 CYP17 which is essentially required to convert androestrin down to testosterone has very low activity so in zona reticularis the androestrin down which is formed has no relevance or has very low relevance in respect to the formation of the testosterone so here the uh, zona reticulase pathway has been shown by the red colored margins so basically when we talk about the adrenal cortex and synthesized hormone synthesized by this adrenal cortex uh, we have three different layers in the adrenal cortex and each layer uh, has its own uh, formation of a steroid so when we talk about zona glomerulosa we find that the final product synthesized by zona glomerulosa is the aldosterone in the same way zona fasciculata is the cortisol and by zona reticularis is the androstenodon which further forms to the male which can be further converted into a testosterone but since the uh, hormone secreted by the uh, zona reticularis as a uh, androstenodon uh, the rate of conversion of androstenodon to testosterone which is done by CYP17 is low so the relevance of the male in, uh, male hormone formed in general reticulates is very low and the functions is almost negligible so when we talk about the next uh, synthesis is the uh, synthesis that takes place in the leddic cells of the testis so in testis 
the male hormone that is the testosterone or the uh, dihydrated testosterone it is uh, it, it it the leydig cells are responsible for uh, for formation of the testosterone which is the male hormone so this uh, pathway is here shown by the purple color and when we look into the purple color formation of the testes uh, we, uh, of, uh, of the testosterone by the testes or the leydig cells present in the testes we can find that the cholesterol is first converted to pregnenolone and then to the uh, progesterone and then this progesterone is converted to the 17 hydroxy progesterone and then to androstenedione and from androstenedione it is converted by 17 dehydrogenase to testosterone so this testosterone is the main uh, male hormone which is synthesized by the lady cells so now when the testosterone is formed this testosterone can uh, uh, this testosterone from the cells uh, moves to different uh, uh, regions and when it goes into the adipocytes it has uh, the adipocytes may have be 450 aromatase where it can convert testosterone to the estradiol and this is uh, the frequency of this conversion adipocytes is very low further testosterone can be converted into dehy dihydrotestosterone by the enzyme 5 alpha reductase some of the test uh, uh, which is some of the testosterone it binds to the globulin protein and then is transferred to the uh, seminiferous tubules so the formation of testosterone uh, and their functions will be studied more in during the male reproductive system here what we find is the biosynthetic biosynthesis of the steroids in different steroidic pathways. So we have uh, taken up this diagrammatic view and we have studied that uh, biosynthesis of the steroids are taken up by the adrenal cortex where uh, we have three layers, the adrenal glomerulus, fasciculata as well as reticularis and we have seen the final products uh, of the steroid that is synthesized by them as well as we have seen the synthesis of testosterone uh, and uh, dihydrotestosterone and it's conversion to estradiol uh, 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 in the analytic cells of the uh, testes. So here I want to make it very clear that in the process of formation of testosterone in analytic cells, the testosterone is the final product which is synthesized in the analytic cells and its conversion either to estradiol or dihydro uh, uh, testosterone is not being taken up in the analytic cells, it is done in the other uh, regions of the body and we will look into it when we will talk about the male reproductive system. So as far as the lytic cells is con uh, confined, we are here confining uh, the synthesis of testosterone to the lytic cells. So here uh, uh, since we are talking about the synthesis of the bi uh, biosynthesis of the steroid, we are completing it, we are just making, the, we, are, we are talking about the flow diagram, we are just completing the part. Uh, from where the testosterone can be converted into estradiol and to dihydrotestosterone. So this is all about the biosynthesis of the steroid and the steroidic pathway follows. So here one thing is more important that <coughs> you can see at the top that pregnenolone is converted to 17 hydroxypregnenolone and then or the next step is the progesterone where progesterone is converted to 17 hydroxy progesterone and so on the pathways move so here we are talking about two pathways which are followed on the top from pregnenolone to 17 hydroxy pregnenolone and progesterone to 17 hydroxy progesterone this constitutes the delta 4 and delta 5 pathways of the uh, steroid biosynthesis so in many books you will find delta 4 delta 5 pathways written over there so you can add it into your slide so this is the main pathways to this is the main way through which the steroids uh, are synthesized in the body in different organs. So next we will look into we have talked about the adrenal cortex, we have talked about the lytic cells. Now we will be talking about the ovary. So when we talk about the ovary, we have to see the structure of ovary and first we have to know about that what are the cells that are present in the ovary. So when we talk about ovary, we have this uh, secondary follicle and we find it that the ovary consists of two layers the thecal cells and the stratified granulosa cells 
So when you look over here, then we have a pink color diagram which indicates the thickle cells, and then we have a purple color diagram which indicates the the granulosa cells. So when we talk about the thickle cells, we have the cholesterol, and this cholesterol is converted to DHEA. Uh, in the last slide, we have talked about it. So the DHEA finally gets converted to androstenedione. ion. When we have androstenedione, ion, this conversion is taking place in the thickle cells. Now, this androstenedione, ion, which is uh, synthesized in the thickle cells, enters into the granulosa cells where the CYP19 aromatase enzyme, which is very important enzyme, converts this androstenedione ion to the ester diol, and this ester diol then forms then uh, uh, enters into the body and, deformed, and performs different female uh, character functions and then we have the another pathway which is already operating in granulosa cells is the formation of cholesterol and cholesterol to pregnenolone and pregnenolone to progesterone and you know that estradiol and the progesterone are the two, Im two important female hormones which performs which carry out different biological effects in the female body so this is the way that uh, how uh, estradiol and progesterone synthesis takes place in the ovary. So we have talked about the synthesis of estrogen uh, hormones in the cortex, we have talked about the synthesis of uh, steroids, uh, testosterone in lytic cells, we have talked about the formation of estradiol and progesterone in the ovary. So this is all about the conversion, how the things takes place in different organs and what are the final products of the steroids that is uh, provided by the steroidogenic cells. So now, uh, to adding to my last slide, we have the some uh, important characters of steroid hormones. Then, when we talk about the characters of important characters of steroid hormones, we talk about the uh, nature that it is lipophilic. Uh, so it does it can easily pass through the cell membrane and. Uh, the receptors which are required for the steroid hormone are generally intracellular receptors and these intracellular receptors bind this steroid hormone bind to the intracellular receptors and then they regulate the gene expression. Most recently it has been shown that uh, there are some of the membrane or just juxta membrane receptors uh, which uh, are the receptors for the steroid hormone and, and responsible for non-genomic detection of steroid hormone. So when we talk about the steroid hormones action, we have to know about the intracellular receptors, we have to talk about the nucleate receptor. So in my next slide, I will be discussing about the receptors and the way that these receptors, that uh, these receptors are involved in binding with the uh, uh, steroid hormones and then carrying out the genomic, uh, gen uh, uh, genomic actions uh, to that uh, uh, receptors. So basically, when we talk, we will in next my slide. In my next slide, we will be talking about the receptors. Then we will be talking about the binding of steroid hormones to the receptors and the uh, functions they perform. So for today, uh, that is uh, all about the steroid hormones biosynthesis. And uh, by then, for then, stay at home, stay safe.